Jody asks, is anyone using Zoom instead of Teams for meetings? And if yes. so, yes. why? Has yes. anyone switched from one to the other? We have been using Zoom for all meetings and our phones, but I'm starting to think about switching to Teams and want to hear thoughts of others. Oh, this how, is much, a how much time question. do you have? How much time do you have? Really? Um, yeah. No, I mean, there's, <laughs> how, there's different. And how in depth do you want to be? Right. Well, th so this is one of those things. So, uh, you know, I so I answered this out in there's a Facebook community where this question was asked um, and I, I put my response out there. So I am a paid Zoom user as well as an avid Teams user. Like we're recording in Teams here for this for these panel the discussions. But when I'm doing one on one interviews, the quality of video and audio for recording uh, interviews um, with a broad range of people and some people that are not in the Microsoft ecosystem, some people that don't have teams, but the quality of video and audio is consistently better than in teams. Mm -hmm. And it's not a judgment call over teams. Teams does a heck of a lot more than zoom does. Um, and we'll come back to some of the other reasons why I use zoom or other third party tools um, but, uh, for the majority of enterprise work for internal, like I, I would love for the quality to improve in teams and my control over the screen, the view, like right, right now, like to do like the, instead of this panel that's by default, it just, that's what it produces in zoom. I can control, I could have the panel view. I could do a single view. I can change that. You've got more control over the output, the, re the recording. And I know that there's other things you can do with, uh, with, with uh, what is it, uh, NDI controls, the, so the specifics, but again, Zoom does those things. I also use StreamYard and I'm actually gonna stop using Zoom and start using StreamYard, which has even better, higher quality. I can, for each of you, if you had a 4K camera, I could capture 4K quality video for each one of you separately and then I can edit them together into one uh, one one video. Um, so depending on what you're doing, um, it is it, it's better audio and video quality now. Microsoft is working on some things, and I'm confident that it'll improve um, later this year. Uh, but that that's the main difference for what I do. My day in day out, the my main business tool is all in teams so i don't know if you you guys have a different different experience go ahead hal you want to talk about yeah. i'm sorry any what? other, th any oh. other oh. thoughts yeah no sorry okay all right so uh i i take a little bit of different approach um and the reason why i do is because I have to use like five different types of conferencing, you know, uh, applications. I use WebEx. I use Google Hangouts. Um, I, you know, use uh, Zoom. I use Teams. Um, I use GoToMeeting. It all depends on who I'm connecting to. As for example, the DoD. The DoD doesn't allow Teams. Okay. Do they, do they use, because uh, I know some uh, federal government bodies use the Adobe product, which is Correct. They another use, one. Yep. They use uh, Adobe or they use WebEx, yeah. okay, which are DOD approved. So it, it really, you know, it kind of depends. For me, I have a wide range. Now, I will say that there are really two that stand out for me for video, video quality. I'm, you know, I'm not a, type, a person that sits there and makes sure that I can see everybody in 1080p or, you know, see everybody in 2K or That's 4K, kind of whatever. Gorgeous. Yeah, it really is when you're talking about video conferencing because you're just chewing bandwidth. Um, but at the same time, um, you know, blurriness, stuff like that makes your eyes go funny. Um, I've only really seen two that stand out. And it's also for flexibility of control, but also because of the quality. And those have been WebEx and Zoom. And I think part of the reason is because WebEx has been around forever. Uh, it really has. I mean, it was, I think it was actually one of the original um, it, it was. conferences. Yeah, there were three. There, there was uh, WebEx, Placeware, which is Microsoft yes. acquired them, and that became Live Meeting, which they then yep. shelved. 
Yeah. Um, but again, that was it was more for uh, it was for web meetings, too, but in yes. webinars is, as well. So yep. external webinars. Exactly. Um, and then I think go to go to meeting and go to webinar were the new kids on the block. They're not quite as old, but they've still been around for 20 plus right. years. Correct. And that's, you know, before Citrix owned them, now then Citrix owned them and then Citrix sold them off. Um, but anyways, the point I'm getting at is it kind of depends, right? If I had to stay with one tool, I have no doubt in my mind the easiest tool for me to use is Zoom. And that's just because that is 90% of what I use is Zoom. And I'm so used to it. I know where buttons are. I know what shortcut keys to hit. I know everything. I mean, it's it's to me, it's like second nature. I get into teams and, you know, the whole cycle of, like you said, live meeting. You remember Groove? Um, we had to go through the whole Groove phase. And then yep. we went, you know, IM, Instant Messenger. And then we went to, uh, you know, from there to where do we go from there? Um, I don't even remember. Oh, a Skype. Uh, Skype and then okay. on the teams, right? Now it just seems like teams is like convoluted to me. It, it's it's difficult even to it's navigate. It's kind of overkill for an awful lot of things. It is, but they're what they're trying to do is well. And this is again my opinion. I've said several times they're they're actually doing too much. They're trying to you know overdo the product. I think, and they're they're trying to make it a complete collaboration platform. I get that. Yeah. Um, yeah. The problem it ties is, into everything in the world that that correct. they build from from PowerPoint to Excel to Word to Outlook to whatever. But that's the that's the cycle of these though enterprise applications. It's like it goes from being a point solution, the uh, um, where you want the best of breed solution for what you're trying to do with some integrations, then they fold it in, it becomes this Uber product, and then it gets too bloated and voted, bogged down, and then the upstarts again and it's broken into separate products i mean that's that's a cycle like i've been doing this for long enough this see is this but cycle i go multiple times around that it is but uh, you know the point that i would make is that i almost seen and this is what i've seen over the last maybe five years is i see teams actually taking steps backwards and they should be taking mm -hmm. step forwards but i think they sometimes they take step backwards because we had the whole problem with oh yeah now we got to back off the video quality because we didn't realize we we're going to chew up this man bandwidth and we weren't using the right codecs and you know all this other kind of stuff and we want to do this nice you know together view and it kind of like takes up all this bandwidth well we didn't figure that out so we got to go back and you know there's all kinds of that when you take a look at some of these other products they've already figured that out and they're just like they're making a product that you just take you install and you use. Yeah. It's not like, you know, yeah, sure, they add their bells and whistles. It's the evolution of a product. But is Zoom actually directly, you know, married to a collaboration platform or to a, you know, a, a, a file sharing platform? No, no, it's 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 Zoom. It's a standalone. Right? It's a best yeah. of breed solution for, again, that's the term. I'm not saying it's the best in breed. No, no, I, I, I get that. Folks. Yeah. But a best of breed solution for doing meetings. It said, look, look, I would argue the other side. Like it's easier for me. It's the the quality is fine where I'm, you know, it, using Teams for the majority of what I need to do. But for specific scenarios where I am bringing people together and I want to record, Zoom is the better solution for for that. StreamYard is even a better solution. It is. I was being chastised by Mike earlier uh, before the, we recorded this. Recorded. <laughs> uh, like, why why have I not moved this interview over to, like, it's we're actually going to move this over to StreamYard because what's unique about that is that um, we could have the higher quality and it's a little more processing. What it does, instead of trying to process it all in the cloud, it processes uh, each of our individual video and audio right, locally right, and right. Then at the end when we close the meeting the recording it then gathers all of the individual pieces and then uploads that to the cloud to where then i as the editor can go and pull down each of the individual streams right. and get much higher local copies of each right. of those streams. So when you have too many participants you run into time sync problems with that so they even say that they're going to have a maximum number of participants. We're like right. teens and Zoom are saying, what now? You can have like a thousand people or something like that. They're, right. you know, which is uh, not practical for a whole lot. of. I know but yeah, it's, it's something yeah. crazy, something just right. a crazy number. Now, 
I'll, I'll just finish off where I, where I'm going with this is that it seems to me that you know you need to pick what's you know going to fit for your business. But I will say the point that we're not taking up is the telephony part. You know how much we love telephony, Christian, right? But she yeah. even calls out in the question about our phones, right? Yeah. So in Teams, you have the PST Enbridge, right? You have that ability to do that. Zoom, you have that ability as well. WebEx, by far, is the most collaborative. I don't know if you've ever seen their telepresence, but holy cow, yeah. is that thing miraculous. Being able to see a complete meeting on your telephone screen, on your little you know, 10-inch telephone it's, screen. It's actually for, for enterprises adopting oh, and incredible. moving over to Teams, I, th I see that, that, um, <laughs> that battle with Cisco more than I see Zoom or any other vendor. It's uh, so well, organizations that are looking like unified comms, Avaya. Cisco, Avaya, Mitel, Mitel, yeah, right. yeah. throw a little mesh into the, into the, into the yeah. pot too there while you're at it. Yeah. yeah. I mean, realistically, it, it kind of depends on the situation. If you want to say it depends, right? Yeah. Um, personally, I'm all Zoom. Teams, not for me. Well, one other thing I will say, throw in there, it's not quite what Jody was asking for. Somebody's got a dog going wild. Um, it is webinars. So I don't know, Jody, if that also factors into your question because um, having, and I know that there are people that'll go and run their webinars on uh, the, the Teams premium and those features. And my experience is that it is not ready for the consumer you know, prime time. It's, it's not. I mean, Zoom is at the cost and I don't need to do anything. It just works that I can purchase it and it does all of the pre, does the reminders, does the setup with the landing page. I can run a webinar. So still use um, like for with Techie Gurus. I mean, we are a paid Zoom webinar, you know, customer for that. And we've had some working only in Microsoft Tech that's like, why are you not using this? It's like, because we, we don't have time to mess around with and have to have an engineer sitting there throughout every webinar to make sure everything's running um yeah, like it is. no we just and then it's all more, the com it's it's more complex more yeah it's, it's more complex more than it needs to be it really yeah. is so yeah my my you know i we had a vote right now i would say zoom it's the easiest easiest route to go if you want to go really easy just go to hangouts i mean that by far is like oh you just <laughs> click a button and yeah. you can do a hangout you know I, <clears throat> um, or what do they call them now? Huddles. I'm sorry. Huddle. Yeah. Just do a huddle. So I, I would pick <laughs> Teams over the Google products you know, every day. But again, it depends on what you're doing because uh, of the things that happen. Some of the pros for Teams are exactly like this. We'll finish this recording. The transcript is already running and be captured. It's mm. instantly available in my tenant. It's searchable. It's an information asset in there. So my post-production is pretty light. I've got the content. I've got it in the knowledge base. I can go quickly build content off of it. I've got Copilot running, I, you know, so I can go and leverage that content. That those this information asset is now available to me within the system. So you think about that. If you have by default for just internal meetings, much less invite people in, by default have the transcript on, so you're recording every meeting in the system they become those information assets. I think it is one of the most overlooked pieces of, you know, uh, of, you know, uh, your, of your IP uh, for an organization is your meetings. And if you're not recording those, capturing those, it's just, you can do that with something if you're using Zoom, it's just additional steps to take the recording, move it all over into two teams, run the transcript of it to pull all the data out of it, and you have that. I do that as well. If I'm doing my recordings in StreamYard, then I have to go through that activity. It's, if I go straight out to YouTube and pull the recording down and go through those steps, it's, it's a trade-off for, again, the purpose. Day in, day out, Teams is what I use. Um, when I have outside recordings, I use Zoom. When I'm doing larger broadcasts and higher quality, I'm going to use StreamYard for that. So, I, I've, I got to put a plug in for Riverside. Uh, I use Riverside. Riverside, Riverside, Riverside works all the same way. In fact, most of the uh, professional, uh, uh, you know, marketing people that do the audio video, um, yeah, Riverside is another. Um, it's again, you you got to do some tweaks. 
It requires somebody to be on there as the operator, the admin running that, um, the producer of the content. But yeah, that is one of the highest quality. Um, well, now you can have, have, now you can have in Riverside an AI producer. So it's not even a real person that has to be there. It has an AI that can produce it for you. So it's kind of cool. How do you know I'm really here, Mike? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> we, Why, never know. we never we know don't. that, Christian. <laughs> Ha, 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 ha.